It's a huge, huge, hugely important day. Uh, you know, it's important that the world can mark an occasion to both remember the victims uh, of disasters that have changed the course of history and the course of many of our lives, but also so that we can raise awareness, uh, so that we can prepare and so we can avoid future deaths. You know, there are a couple elements that are important whenever we tell the story of what happened. The first is the humanity of what we saw, how people helped each other anonymously. They didn't have to be from the same country, from the same race, from the same religion. Uh, so, you know, it was humans helping humans. And to me, that is always the core of the message of what I tell. I think the second is that a lot of what happened on the day that the tsunami hit could have been avoided. If the warning systems had worked, if the governments had collaborated, if you know, everything had worked as it should have worked, we could have saved hundreds of thousands of lives. And I think that you know, while it's important that we reflect on the past and, and know that, it, it's also equally important that we change the future. It's never easy to go back to the moments of the tsunami and what happened in the aftermath, but it's so important to get the message out there that, and, and I'm so fortunate to be able to share the story um, that I think that it's, it's, you know, a higher cause that we need to fight for. I mean, a lot happened, and a lot was going through my head. Uh, on one hand, I had to take care of my younger brother, uh, who was five at the time. I'd never taken care of anyone uh, alone. My parents said, you, you know, you can't babysit, you're not old enough, and all of a sudden, I had to do it on my own. Uh, but they were also helping me, right? Other people, uh, they came, they gave us food, they looked after each other. Um, a Swedish family took care of us. And so on one hand, while I was terrified, I was also hopeful that I would be able to find my family. And I was fortunate enough that I did. I found my father, then we found our mother and our older brother, uh, and we were united. And not everyone had that fortune. And so it's important to remember that I'm here telling a story because I was so lucky. But there were many, many, many others that weren't so lucky. So I was uh, by the pool, this was probably about 8 in the morning, and we were playing by the pool, and all of a sudden the world starts to shake, and you don't really understand what's happening, and then you start to hear screams, then you all of a sudden see a black wall. And many times when we think of a tsunami, we imagine a big wave that you can recognize. It's really a massive wall that approaches so fast, and before you even understand what happens, you're being drowned, you're being pulled underwater, uh, and it's, you know, you lose consciousness. Uh, and then when you can finally come up and, and get breath, uh, you know, you don't see the world. You see people floating, people screaming, uh, you see, you know, torn buildings, and, and it's hard to recognize reality uh, in that moment. The first thought is always a panic. Uh, you, you, you know, I, when I woke, when I first um, came out of the water, I thought it was a nightmare. I kept pinching myself, saying I'm going to wake up. You know, it's just a bad dream. But it's not a bad dream. It's something that can happen to anyone at any moment. And I think that's why it's so important that we do something about it. Uh, and that's why we're here today, raising awareness. It's, it's the fact that you know, for many people, it wasn't a nightmare. Uh, it was their life. In many ways, uh, I think an experience like this shapes who you are and what you want to do with your life. Uh, so on a primary level, it makes you aware of how fortunate we are that we are alive and the, the value that every day has and that we cannot waste it, that we need to be proactive, uh, but also that we need to live to be dedicated to helping others. And I think that you know, moving forward, I want to keep uh, helping raise awareness about tsunamis, about other disasters, uh, as well as many of the other problems that the world has. Uh, but I think a tsunami, it's, it's hard to frame everything that you learn. Uh, but at the core of it is you know, the humanity that resides inside each of us. Evidently, the tsunami changes the way that you approach nature, that you approach the sea. Every time I go to the beach now, I always think, you know, like if something like that were to happen again, how like what, what's the tallest building I could get to? Uh, if I needed to evacuate, where could I go? Um, but it, it's again hard to do that because it's not the human instinct. When, you know, when you go to the beach, you want to have fun. But I think it's important that 
you know, the local authorities, that the governments make us aware of what these procedures are. And it's hard because, you know, again, if you're, I'm from a tourist country like Spain, uh, you know, I, I don't think that the government really wants to be saying, you know, be ready for a tsunami, but it's so, so important that we do. Uh, and again, we have to remember how many lives we can save if that does happen. Um, so have you uh, watched uh, the film, uh, The Impossible, mm -hmm. that, that was, you know, that is modeled on your family experience? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I've watched it many times. Uh, I think it's a fantastic film. It's very, very close uh, to what actually happened. And, you know, part of my family uh, spent a considerable amount of time making sure that it was representative of the reality, not just of our family, but of everyone that was there on that day. And, and you know, we want that film to convey the message of, you know, the impact that tsunami can have, uh, but again, of the humanity that is necessary to overcome such catastrophes. Mm -hmm. Well, there are a number of uh, roles that I think are important. The first is, you know, coming to events and talking and, and helping share the story. The second is, and this is something that is in my power, but is in the power of everyone, uh, to, you know, help spread the message on social media, on different forums, uh, when you're in class in high school, in university, uh, when you go out to coffee, you know, it's important to have these conversations with people and make sure that it's not something that is in the back of everyone's mind until it happens. And then the media pays attention to it and then everyone cares. It needs to be something that we're working towards continuously. I think it's best summarized by saying that it's unpredictable but foreseeable and deadly. I think those three words really you know, are representative of the fact that we know that these things happen. We know that we can't know exactly when, but that they will happen. And that if they do and we haven't prepared, many, many people will die. Uh, again, and it, it elicits that responsibility that we have to improve the current circumstances around the world. Well, I, I think uh, you know, people all around the world look up to the UN uh, as a voice of reason, of impartiality, uh, of sanity. And, and so the UN needs to begin by, again, projecting awareness, projecting preparedness. If the UN doesn't show commitment, which it fortunately is, uh, then other countries won't step up, right? But it needs to be a movement that is born here in the UN and then spreads to different governments and then from the governments to the people around the world. Well, first of all, you know, I think both Petra and I are very, very grateful uh, to be here and for the opportunity to share our stories. Uh, but, you know, we always insist that we don't want it to be just a story that we tell and then, you know, you go home and you forget about it. We also want to see concrete actions and, and we hope that the UN is the place where those actions begin.